afternoon and welcome to the 2024 budget hearings for Franklin County, Ohio. The next agency we will hear from is Fleet Management. And team, can we try to the video at the beginning? Yes. Is everyone ready? We're ready. Thank you. Just so you know, I'm not IT focused at all, so that's not me. <laughs> you could have expected it from me. We know we, we blame it on DCA law. It's her. <laughs> yeah, I, I fully embrace that, Commissioner. I fully embrace it. I will send it to you on a BlackBerry, so it'll be beautiful. Charlotte, why don't you go ahead with your presentation? Yeah. Are you ready for our slides? There we go. Okay, so, all right, good afternoon. Thank you for selecting fleet management for a bu budget presentation. It has been seven years since we had to do one of these, so it was refreshing, but it was intimidating to say the least. So what do we do at fleet? We're a quiet agency that does what we do and we operate in the background and we're good with that. But what is it that we do do? Uh, we do everything but paint. Uh, we have two divisions, mechanical and maintenance, where we do preventative maintenance, spark plugs, filters, brakes, tires, shocks, suspension, air conditioning, heat, transmission, engine, exhaust, check engine lights, hybrid system diagnostic, and more. Our second division is equipment and upfit. We install light bars and all the cruiser equipment, which with all that we have in those cars now is about 100 man hours per vehicle. We install prisoner transport systems, cargo barriers, push bumpers, equipment vaults, and that's just to name a few. So what is our story? We're a small agency with less than a dozen employees. From the moment we open at 5 a.m. till the time we close at 4 p.m., we're helping others. And our others are county employees who are out there on the front lines helping and serving the residents of Franklin County. From the Office on Aging delivering emergency kits to animal control helping reunite lost dogs with their owners, EDP conducting building inspections, 
and JFS, Family Stabilization Unit transporting families in crisis to a safe place, even public health immunization clinics. The list goes on and on. Over half of our fleet is assigned to the Sheriff's Office, and we do all that we can to keep them on the road, responding to the emergencies, and protecting the residents of our county. No one thinks about us until the vehicle is broken. And all the things that go into keeping a vehicle on the road, we do behind the curtain. We provide vehicles, equipment, fuel, claim service, towing, loaner vehicles, and roadside service. The vehicles we provide are necessary tools for the other divisions to serve the residents of Franklin County, and we're happy to, happy to be of help. I wanna take a minute to just put a little perspective in some numbers as to what we do. We maintain 528 vehicles, 292 of those are within the Sheriff's Office. We assist 64 different divisions, each with a unique need and requirements. Our fleet is on track to drive 5.4 million miles in 2023. We process over 33,000 fuel entries every year. Our fleet uses 6,200 gallons of fuel each week. We've trained almost 2,100 employees through our fuel card program. We provide accident claim service on an average of 80 accidents a year. We purchased 34 vehicles in 2023, and we would have doubled that if the manufacturers could have made them. In the first nine months of this year, we have completed 742 oil changes with only half of the staff we should have. We have changed 497 tires in that same time frame with that same staff. We have completed 2,312 work orders. So 2,312 times in the last nine months, a county employee has come to fleet for help. Those work orders contain 332 different tasks with a total of 5,419 procedures. If we are anything, we're busy but our mission remains the same, to keep county employees on the road safely so that they can serve the residents of Franklin County. In 2023, we continued with our mission to shift our fleet to alternative powered vehicles. We've been moving in the electric direction since 2011 when we purchased our first hybrid vehicles. Then in 2015, we purchased our first hybrid plug-in vehicles. Every year since then, we look at what electric vehicles are available for purchase and where we could fit those into our fleet. As of today, we have a total of 67 electric alternative fueled vehicles. That's 43 hybrid, 19 hybrid plug-in, two fully electric, one electric diesel, and two propane powered. We have an additional 74 E85 vehicles, which we began purchasing in 1998. We've been making significant strides in this mission since Ford began producing a hybrid police cruiser in 2020. We've placed 30 of them on the road over the last three years, despite COVID. And we have another 17 on order right now. In 2024, our goal is to continue on the electric path by purchasing more hybrid cruisers. Patrol cruisers have the largest fuel consumption of any division. They operate 24-7, so moving those to hybrid will more greatly impact our goal of reducing our use of traditional fuel. The first full year of operating 14 hybrid patrol cruisers, we saw a reduction in fuel usage of 4%. This year, we are on par to see a decrease of 6% as we have increased the number of hybrids in patrol. When thinking about our challenges in 2023, one thing comes to mind, technology. Yes. All of our challenges go back to the changes and advancements in the automotive technology. Vehicle technology has accelerated at such a fast pace, it has left behind the piece of the puzzle that really makes it sustainable, the mechanic. In an industry that has been hands-on with gears and rotors, points and plugs, to today's industry that has morphed into computer diagnostic and reprogramming. We have left behind the days of looking at the physical pieces and seeing the where and finding the problem. Now it requires a computer and a diagnostic program to uncover the issue and fix it. In 1996, when the first step into vehicle electronic controls came, 
Then we jump to 2005 when the first hybrid vehicle was produced. Technology has taken off full steam ahead. Today, around 27 different computer modules guide the operation of a single vehicle. The automotive industry has excelled with this technology, but at the same time, the skill set needed to work on a vehicle has drastically changed. Mechanics of the 90s and the early 2000s are out of their element with the current vehicle. The days of a kid taking apart the lawnmower to see how it works, and the same kid going to trade school to learn how to work on cars, those days are gone. The traits and skills have changed, and the mechanic and the technician profession has suffered with a lack of interest. Fast forward to today, the profession is lacking the volume of mechanics it needs, and we are all fighting for the few new technicians out there. So what are we doing to build our future and bring in the new talent? We're making connections to trade schools, to colleges with an automotive technology program, to non-traditional style training programs like Equip Skills here in Columbus. We're engaging and exchanging ideas on what we need from the techs and what the new generation of technicians are looking for in a working environment. The automotive mechanic of today needs to have both hard repair skills as well as electrical and technological skills. Finding someone interested in both is a challenge, but we will continue to champion our industry and hopefully reap the rewards with hiring new employees. I have started the conversation of the potential of an automotive futures program and how that would introduce many into the automotive repair field and begin to fill the industry with a new generation of mechanics. Coming in 2024 are two mobile offices. In 2023, we designed and ordered two 38-foot mobile offices. They're in the production phase and expected to arrive in the first quarter of 2024. Fleet was happy to work with the HHS agencies and county administration to design these vehicles so that our customers, the Franklin County Commissioner's agency employees, can get into the community and bring the services and skills of our great county to the citizens. Bringing the office to the communities is a new approach and will be transformative to many of our most vulnerable citizens. Meeting them where they are is another way to demonstrate the commissioner's commitment to every resident every day. And Fleet was happy to help in this endeavor. In closing, I would like to thank the commissioners for your support of our department and appreciate you challenging me to stay on my toes and up to date in the electric technology. I would also like to acknowledge County Administrator Wilson and Deputy County Administrator Long for the confidence you show in Fleet and our ability to get the job done and to keep our drivers safe and on the road. So any questions, I'm happy to field them. Thank you, Charlotte. And again, I'll just add, like I added uh, to purchasing, you, def you guys definitely are, the or you, you, your team is definitely um, uh, the heartbeat of Franklin County. Without vehicles, I can't imagine our ability to live, how our, our ability to deliver our services would be. So uh, I know we've had this conversation over and over, and, and I, I, I only do this because, you know, for the public that's listening, I think it's important whenever we can to be as transparent uh, as we can be. And you know what I'm about to talk about with it, and that's the electric vehicle movement. Um, mm -hmm. As we know, um, all of the manufacturers, major manufacturers have announced that they're going to all electric vehicle manufacturing, uh, I think, uh, starting in the year 2030, which is uh, just six short years away. Uh, and, and so as such, uh, and giving some of the volatility in the Middle East with regards to oil and gas prices and how they're going to be affected, uh, there is uh, increasingly uh, some concern about uh, the ability to uh, have the resources needed should things sort of uh, kind of get turned topsy-turvy for us uh, for gas price standpoint. So I, I know we're going to be having a meeting coming up next week or so, I think, to talk about this electric vehicle strategy. And again, I'm not, I'm not saying let's transform all our vehicles into that, but I think uh, being prepared for this uh, direction from the manufacturers as well as society, I think, you know, Franklin County um, is the type of size county that we should be prepared and we should be prepared that if 
gas prices are so substantially impacted and increased. I've seen some economists talk about a potential doubling of uh, the gas prices, um, uh, given what the potential of what could happen to the Middle East. Uh, and and so uh, just kind of can you talk a little bit about our uh, conversations or at least some thought process about some electric vehicle acquisition as it stands? And I, I'm just getting close on this with my question. You know, as it stands, I mean, it's hard to get them. You know, you have to order them almost a year or two out, looks like, uh, you know, uh, and uh, so that's that's a little challenge. But 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 that's about the right timing when we think that, you know, we should be ready at least have our first sort of wave of electric vehicles and more importantly, the infrastructure to support it and the talent to support it. So. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, we try to always plan in a five year cycle. So five years into the future, uh, we look at what, you know, what we are ready to replace and their application in the fleet and where that sweet spot is for a hybrid or an all electric. Um, we have uh, engaged Clean Fuels Ohio to do an analysis of our fleet and also analysis of our um, infrastructure within Franklin County. We just started that. Um, and, and I asked them if we could do a five to 10 year plan, like where do we need to be? Um, they're more of an expert in the industry when it comes to alternative fuels and, and, and electrics and that. So, so we wanted an outside view um, to make sure we're going in, in the right direction as well, according to the uh, standards of the industry. Uh, we've also, uh, I met with um, a representative from AEP to talk about infrastructure pieces for charging stations um, and what's the path to get that uh, a plan in place instead of, oh, I have a car, where can I put the plan? Where can I put the station? Uh, a more of a, a long-term plan than just uh, winging it when we got one. Uh, so, so that was, we just met yesterday, and we're going to talk about uh, moving that plan forward as well. Uh, so, uh, we I'll try look, to I'm... look into the future. Uh, mm -hmm. One of our biggest hurdles is application, um, and if we have a vehicle available to do the job it needs to do, and is there somewhere to plug it in if they're doing the job? Sure. Yeah, I mean, all of those things I think are legitimate uh, things to think about. So I'm glad that we're talking about it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to our meeting to push the envelope along. Again, I, I happen to be a little more advanced in this uh, subject matter area, um, you know, and it's, and it's really just based on facts and, and, and information that I have. Uh, look at what's coming out of the White House, what's coming out of Congress, what's coming out of the manufacturers. Um, we don't want to be caught uh, five years from now even still planning while uh, the uh, uh, automotive uh, movement has moved in this direction. Um, I want to encourage you. Uh, and uh, I see DCA Long. I want to encourage you to get to some of these conferences that the White House and Congress is hosting, and some of the manufacturers are hosting because the vehicles exist. I mean, they've got all um, electric police vehicles, uh, fire vehicles. I mean, they exist. They're hard to get, and the technology is advancing on them rapidly. But uh, but I think, uh, and there's nothing wrong with Franklin County being a leader uh, nationally in this conversation. There's nothing wrong. Uh, we're that kind of county. We we should be. So uh, I'm looking forward to the conversation and, and your leadership, certainly, uh, and, and really DCA Long, just 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 being a, a, a research uh, rooted and oriented and prepared. You know, um, we just have to be prepared that if gas prices surge on us, what that cost will be as well and our ability to manage that, given the region we're in and the competitiveness it'll take to get to that fuel uh, and how much it could hamper us. And so I hope the study will will dig into that. Again, I'm not saying we turn the, you know, just try to begin to completely wean off. I'm just saying let's be prepared. Let's let's jump out in front and not be caught off guard even five years from now. You know. I like your thinking though. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And to your point from the conversation earlier uh, during uh, the general session not just the cars, but the types of charging stations. We, we we heard you loud and clear, Charlotte and Darla together, and, and that's part of the, the ecosystem that um, from a forward thinking standpoint, not just how many and where, but what, what kind and make sure that we're current and a leader in this as well. And uh, I take your point um, uh, as well in terms of conferences and engaging at the national level to make sure we've got the most current information. And I'll say DCA law, I, I really appreciate you bringing that up. That's really an important part 
Um, I happen to be um, uh, uh, fairly uh, well versed in, in this subject matter area. And so, I mean, I really think it's timely in terms of um, the conferences, the information that's available out there because it's all moving very quickly. And there are a lot of federal resources available to support our effort. You know, uh, the Biden administration announced uh, some time back with the NEBI standards, um, that's the National Electric Vehicle uh, Standards, uh, they announced uh, uh, multiple billions of dollars to help municipalities or political subdivisions, governments to uh, build infrastructure because they want to encourage uh, the infrastructure build out so people can travel uh, from place to place and feel confident that they have the ability to, uh, to uh, charge up. Now, what we're talking about here is an internal uh, kind of management system as opposed to sort of, you know, the public, but even still, we, you know, being thoughtful about you know, chargers that are, uh, uh, you know, for our vehicles and even allowing them to be used by the public maybe sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think, again, just thinking ahead is is what we're talking about here. So it's good. I think it's going to be a fun conversation. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and and you'll be surprised. I think, I think Charlotte, you know, uh, maybe, maybe uh, I'll attend some conferences with you because I think you'll be really, really pleased at the vehicles out there. I've been in police car, electric police cars, uh, and they, they do the job and they, they've got... They're, they're quite advanced, and even the charging technology. Um, the, there's a different technology uh, for to fast charge cars for government use, like government worker use that might need the rapid turnover, than there is for the everyday person that might charge at night at home or at while they're at dinner somewhere or something, you know. And so uh, uh, I, I'm looking forward to this conversation and, and oh, yeah. I'm kind of being a leader, uh, at least in Ohio, but probably nationally. I'm up for it. Yeah. And Commissioner, the only other thing I wanted to just lift up that Charlotte mentioned in her uh, conversation or her overview was the automotive futures idea and uh, something that we've just started that conversation about, but uh, just like building futures and county futures um, and um, uh, uh, um, what is the automotive or the, uh, the flying futures, airline futures, what is it called, Ken? Aviation, Aviation futures. futures. That's <laughs> it. Um, uh, but the automotive futures has real potential to really um, uh, garner uh, the, the the next uh, workforce uh, for uh, for certainly our our system, but other governmental entities. So looking forward to uh, further conversations, Charlotte, with you and and Demika and team and and HR and and others and our outside partners to see what we can do there. Sounds good. Are there any other comments or questions? If not, then that will conclude today's presentation from Fleet Management. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, we will next hear from the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Uh, however, we will need to take a couple of minutes to get everything set up. Uh, so we'll begin shortly. And thank you for your patience. <laughs>